Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're logging in from, and welcome to Contango Aura's Live Digital Summit. I'm pleased to introduce their uh, CEO and president today, Rick Van Neuenheiser. Uh, Rick will take us through a brief presentation. Afterwards, we'll be accepting questions. Uh, questions are always open on the right-hand side of your screen in the chat panel. Uh, please ask at any time during the presentation. We'll make sure to get to them after uh, the presentation is completed. And as always, the summit is being recorded today and will be available on Six.com and YouTube to watch afterwards. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Rick to kick things off. Romeo, thanks very much, and uh, good morning, uh, or good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm coming to you from our uh, new office in Fairbanks, so uh, we're still getting things set up, but uh, we're pleased to have uh, moved the headquarters up here to Fairbanks, Alaska. So, um, just starting as we usually do with sort of high-level uh, highlights, it's been a busy year for Contango. Uh, we are now fully permitted uh, with this receipt of the state uh, oper mine operating permits uh, earlier this summer uh, where we started uh, actually mining and uh, so we are fully permitted. Uh, the other big thing that we were uh, responsible for doing this summer is uh, getting the company fully financed uh, in obviously a pretty tough market for, for, gold, uh, for gold equities. Uh, but we did manage to raise over 30 million dollars. Uh, uh, of equity, and we put in place a $70 million line of credit with ING and Macquarie Banks. Uh, so we are fully funded, uh, we're fully permitted uh, for production, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, show you some photos of, uh, of site, and uh, uh, we're, uh, we're well on our way to becoming a producer um, in 2024. So uh, we're, we're on track, and uh, as I said, we're fully funded, fully permitted. Um, of course, uh, just a quick uh, review is the Mancho project uh, located close to the Yukon border there, but in Alaska on land zoned by the Tetlin tribe. Uh, we've had an agreement with the tribe since uh, 2008. Uh, they're very much looking forward to uh, receiving a royalty. Uh, we already hire a lot of local uh, people from the, from the Tetlin village and from the Tok, uh, and, uh, Tok area. Uh, so the idea again is to mine that site at the Mancho site and truck the ore up to the Fort Knox mill uh, located in central Alaska here just outside of Fairbanks here where the Red Star is on the uh, map of Alaska. Um, and as we'll talk about a little later, um, our Lucky Shot mine located just north of Anchorage again on the road system actually on the rail system uh, over in uh, south central Alaska rail between Anchorage and Fairbanks and uh, we'll look at uh, look at the same kind of a plan for developing Lucky Shot uh, with uh, mining at site but transporting the ore to the uh, mill at Fort Knox here. Lots, lots of work to do to get there but uh, we're looking at that same kind of plan to execute. Quick update on our uh, capital structure, obviously we've uh, issued some equity so we're up to about 9.4 million uh, issued an outstanding, uh, a little bit of a few warrants and options, uh, and then uh, our debt five facility of seventy million dollars. Uh, we've drawn twenty of that, um, and we have a, a additional twenty million dollars of a convertible debt uh, in there as well. Um, and we ended the year about sixteen million dollars of cash in the bank. So we're again well funded. Uh, we've only tapped into twenty million of that seventy million dollar line of credit. So we're I think we're in really good shape. We had our mine opening this summer after we received the, uh, the state uh, mine operating permit and uh, uh, the governor was there, Chief Michael Sam from the Tetlin tribe, uh, all the tribal members, tribal council members uh, and other dignitaries. Uh, so we are now the sixth operating mine in Alaska. So uh, uh, I think uh, it was a great, great grand celebration. Uh, mining is taking place. Uh, our uh, mine contractor is uh, Kewitt one of the largest in the world um, and uh, uh, we're mined during the winter time. We, we always get a lot of questions of whether we can mine in Alaska during the winter time. Uh, uh, Fairbanks and the interior is uh, clear and cold. Uh, Toke often is one of the colder places in uh, North America but uh, um, as long as it stays above 40 uh, we can mine year round uh, no problem at all. Um, this is the highway, or sorry, the roadway from the mine site down to the uh, uh, to the highway. Uh, and this, uh, we're we're passing one of the uh, 
uh, freight haul trucks that are transporting the ore uh, from the Mancho mine site up to the Fort Knox mill. You can see this is a, the road here is a, it's a gravel road. It's pretty wide uh, and it's got a 6% grade so it makes it easy for the uh, for the truck haul, uh, particularly in the winter time, want to make sure safety is obviously the most important thing here. Uh, so you have a nice wide road and a, and a nice uh, gentle grade all the way up to the mine site, between the mine site and the, and the road, the highway. Um, we're transporting ore. Uh, picture here on the on the right is the, the first uh, dump of ore uh, into the stockpile at Fort Knox. And uh, uh, we're, I think they're running between five and eight trucks a day right now. So uh, things are going uh, according to plan uh, and now on schedule. Actually, I'd say ahead of schedule, uh, if anything. Um, uh, at the mill modifications at Fort Knox are moving along. Uh, they've completed the uh, the stockpile, obviously. We're stockpiling. They're making a few modifications to it to uh, improve uh, the, the speed turnaround on the, on the dumps. Um, the uh, tailings pipeline down to the uh, bottom of the oldest part of the Fort Knox pit uh, has been completed. Uh, there's still some uh, work being done uh, at the mill itself, uh, kind of in two main areas. Basically, it's, it's all tanks and piping uh, because the ore at Mancho is uh, 8 grams per ton and the average of the uh, uh, Fort Knox ore is 0.8, so there's a 10 times uh, grade uh, going through the mill with the Mancho ore. Um, we need more tank space for cyanide, for the cyanide disc truck circuit, uh, uh, for lime addition, um, and, uh, and for carbon, um, you know, carbon loading. Uh, so those are all the, uh, basically all the, the tanks area. Area three there is a conveyor system uh, that'll reroute the harder ore that gets kicked out of the uh, sag mill, and it, re it, go it gives it a second shot to go through the sag mill again and get broken up. Um, this is a little different from what happens with the typical Fort Knox ore that uh, actually just gets kicked out because it doesn't have any grade in it. But uh, uh, our harder material does have a lot of grade in it, so it'll get a second shot at the, at the mill circuit. But that's all scheduled to be completed in the next uh, few months here, and uh, uh, we'll be looking to have our, uh, our uh, first gold pour. Uh, in the uh, uh, first half of the year and uh, generating cash flow back uh, to back to the company and uh, uh, that'll be uh, that'll be a momentous uh, time for uh, for the company it's been uh, a long hard road to get here but we're we're nearly there um, we basically spent the most of the capital now I think about 98 uh, percent capital spend and we're basically spending working capital now mining uh, and transporting more up to the Fort Knox uh, mill uh, we uh, are. We believe we're still on uh, on track for our all-in sustaining costs to be uh, a little over 1100, uh, 1116, uh, as per the feasibility study. And uh, the main, because we're contract mining, uh, we have contract uh, hauling, and we have a contract tolling arrangement. Uh, there really isn't a lot of huge room for uh, for inflationary pressures there. Uh, the main one would be uh, the price of oil and the price of diesel specifically. Um, uh, we've used uh, for our banking uh, uh, banking parameters, we've used a hundred dollar barrel based uh, diesel price, and so obviously we're well under that right now. I think we're just over seventy dollars a barrel. Um, we bought all our fuel for for the year here, so uh, we're in good shape there. I think we'll we'll see our all in sustaining costs come in right on track. So next stop is production. Um, we uh, plan to have uh, the guidance is still to have production uh, by the middle of the year, and I think we're a little bit ahead of schedule, so hopefully we'll be a bit in front of that. But uh, uh, we'll be looking forward to building that stockpile up at Fort Knox, uh, and um, and uh, uh, continuing uh, to have operations uh, for uh, the next five years, and obviously a lot of, a lot of exploration work to do. Um, beyond that, on the very large land package that uh, we have under lease from the Tetlin tribe. Um, cash flow, um, these really haven't changed. Uh, they're, as per the feasibility study, the, the high end of the numbers we could use in the feasibility study were 1920, and you can see that generates over $50 million of free cash flow. I think we're still on track for that. Uh, gold had another run up over 2000, uh, but now it's come. Come back off. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So, uh, you know, we're going to kind of stick with this guidance. I think we're, for our internal planning purposes, we're using an 1850 gold price uh, for our internal budgeting purposes. Uh, so, uh, I think we're, we're well on track to be able to achieve uh, our objectives uh, for the year uh, coming up. By the year, I mean uh, 2024, year ahead of us. Um, so, uh, we will be looking at uh, advancing our other projects, our other exploration projects uh, this year. Um, and but main, uh, one of our main focus will continue to be on Lucky Shot, where we uh, see the opportunity to, to do more or less the same thing that we've done with, uh, with Mancho, uh, using an existing mill facility to process ore. A um, lot of work to do to get there. Uh, first step is to find a, a mineable resource. First lucky shot, high grade historic producer, um, produced about a quarter million ounces at 40 grams per ton. That was selectively mined and, and hand cobbed ore, so they, they, they upgraded the ore just literally by hand. That was pretty much what they did back in the day. Um, we're looking at something uh, resource more in the <coughs> in the half ounce per ton range. Um, we did, did earlier this year publish our initial resource. Uh, around 100,000 ounces uh, at about half ounce per ton, 15.6 grams per ton, uh, and we started to, we started to uh, outline plans to drill uh, up at Coleman. We got uh, got set up, but we didn't really get a lot of drilling done. Uh, winter came a bit early on us, and we, we got a bit of a late start. So we're all set up uh, to start that work uh, next summer. We decided not to. Uh, not to try to operate during the winter time, it would just be uh, expensive, and uh, uh, we decided it'd be better to hold on to our cash until we made sure that Mod Show was actually in production. Uh, we did get uh, set up. Um, you can see the the mountain there is pretty steep, uh, so you got to set up these uh, uh, these drill pads. They're uh, they're a lot of work, um, and you kind of place them strategically so we can get probably uh, ten or ten or fifteen holes drilled per pad. Uh, in a fan shot. Uh, what the idea here is to, uh, this is on the Coleman segment, uh, the purple and red colors are the are the ore shoots, the higher grade zones that we want to mine. Um, the, veins, the vein is uh, continuous, but it only runs high grade in these ore shoots. You can see in the middle of that donut there is where the historic mining took place. So obviously that was good grade, um, but we're just want to drill for a little further down plunge um, from this pad, we'll probably set up a couple more pads to drill uh, further down plunge. And this area basically plunges right towards the uh, uh, the end of the western drift here. So the this is a perspective looking to the to the north. The the uh, lucky shot uh, search tunnel comes in there. We've done uh, you see the drilling that we've done uh, to uh, identify the vein. These are our pilot holes. And on the very end of the western drift there, that's the drift that goes off into the foot wall of this Lucky Shot vein. We drilled a couple of fan shots there. Uh, it only outlines a very small resource, uh, a little over 10,000 ounces, but we're just getting started. Um, and that Coleman zone comes in uh, down to this level, uh, just off uh, to the left of the uh, image here and into uh, uh, into the screen, if you will. So it's a bit, it's a bit offset from where we are along the fault there. Uh, but once we get that drilled and the resource to find down that level, we'll be able to uh, use the in-search infrastructure uh, to mine and uh, exit the ore, uh, so that we can then uh, uh, haul it up to Fort Knox. Obviously, we've got a lot of work to do to get there. Uh, we want to drill out uh, the Coleman area and then also drill out the uh, uh, the Lucky Shot. Uh, in the foot wall and the hang wall, it's uh, a lot of drilling. Um, it's um, it, it's about uh, uh, fifteen, no, thirteen thousand meters of drilling. Uh, it's all short holes. There are only uh, maybe fifty to one hundred uh, meter holes at the at the longest. Um, but once we get that done, we should have a three to four hundred thousand ounce resource identified, plus what we have over at um, uh, at the Coleman. And that'll be enough to develop a mine plan around. So we'll start this work uh, next year in the summertime. Give us a year to get all the drilling done and put together a mine plan. That we then would hope to have something we could put uh, present to everybody in say 2026 
uh, as a as a as a mining operation. Um, obviously, we'd have to work out an arrangement with Fort Knox. Um, uh, we would look to use the rail to transport the ore up to Fort uh, up to Fairbanks and then uh, by truck up to Fair uh, to Fort Knox. So, a lot of work to do, um, but we think it's a good solid plan to maybe uh, augment our production initially by thirty to forty thousand ounces, and then over time as we get more working faces going. Uh, maybe up to 50, 60,000 ounces of production. And again, we own 100% of uh, Lucky Shot, so uh, it'll be a little different uh, arrangement with Fort Knox, but uh, they've got a hungry mill, and, and they they, uh, they tell us they're interested to, to entertain the idea of uh, processing Lucky Shot uh, ore. So, where else? what else do we do? And I wanted to spend a bit of time just talking about the Lausanne curve, and uh, uh, it's been uh, been talked a lot about over the years. Uh, Pierre Lassonde is a well-known uh, investor in the in the in the mining space and in the junior space specifically. And um, I think he introduced this about 25 years ago. Uh, but you know, it sort of talks about the uh, or shows it demonstrates the uh, progression of exploration, uh, the excitement of a discovery hole, and and uh, but then the you know that's the steep part of the curve, and there's a lot of value to add there. But then the hard work starts, and you have to do uh, metallurgy, and you know resource continuity, and the infill drilling, and is the grade really hang together, and uh, all those geotechnical, hydrology, etc. All that work is a little boring to the market, and it, and it, it, that's so you, you peak out, and then you you go through that long period of time where you you've got to do a lot of a lot of hard work. So you're not adding ounces, and so. Um, you, you go into a bit of a trough zone, and then you, once you once you get permitted and you and you raise the capital and build the mine, you know you, you're valued more on a on a, on a ca discount to cash flow or a premium to cash flow, depending on the, uh, the kind of operation you are and where jurisdictionally where you are. So, but that is a it's a pretty typical, it's well known curve, and and it's uh, it's uh, been demonstrated time and time again in the market. Um, and I wanted to show you, so here's a couple of things that happened with the Lausanne curve. Uh, I think this, the excitement there for a discovery is, is still very much alive and well, and you, you've got a great, uh, good, good drill holes, you get, you get the attention of the market, but you're still subject to this orphan period. Um, and what's happened with the orphan period is actually extended. Uh, it used to be two to three years, and now it's probably five plus years. Um, so you're, the, junior, the typical junior company that is an explorer and who puts together a resource has that long hard slog and, and if it's if it's permitting or First Nations issues or um, uh, or just just raising capital uh, in a tough market it's hard to raise money and you're doing it at relatively lower valuations um, that's an opportunity and it's an opportunity for us because I've, I've plotted where I think you know roughly contango sits we're on the other side of the of the orphan period because we very quickly were permitted. We were very quickly uh, built our uh, our mine infrastructure because we didn't build a mill and a tailings facility, and we didn't have to permit those things. It didn't take you know five years to do that. It took us a year. So we were we kind of beat the Lausanne curve a bit, and uh, we're on the other side of it. We're not we're not fully valued in the sense of uh, we're not. Valued on a on a cash flow, uh, we're, we're valued on a discount to our cash flow, not on a pure cash flow basis. But on a relative basis, we're much stronger uh, than uh, our peer group companies who are who have a resource and who are you know struggling to raise capital to uh, advance it. So that's going to present an opportunity for us. Um, I wanted to talk, just leave you with that uh, thought. We don't have anything specific to. Uh, to present, but uh, we we see this as an opportunity for for Contango and for Contango shareholders. So I'll leave you with that and um, uh, wish you a happy holidays. But uh, before we get to the end here, I'll uh, turn back to you, Romeo, and see if there's any, any questions there. Thanks very much, Rick, for that update. I know we have gotten some questions live, uh, but there's some questions that came in on email in advance. So I just wanted to run through those first before we get to the live questions. Uh, but for the group, especially those who came in a bit later, just so you know, the bottom right of your screen, there's a chat function where you're welcome to ask questions at any time. 
So jumping into the uh, the questions that we've got from email. Uh, first one, you already answered it, but always good to reiterate. Um, asked, is Mancho fully permitted to production? Is anything needed before a pour? Yeah, no, we're fully permitted. Uh, federal permits uh, were received uh, over a year ago. Uh, state permits are, uh, earlier this uh, summer. Um, and I'll just, but I'll take the opportunity to just talk a little bit about uh, uh, the trucking plan. Uh, we don't need any permits to drive legal trucks with legal drivers on the highway, uh, but there's been definitely some controversy over that, specifically with uh, some local uh, community concerns. And uh, so we've been addressing those. The, the governor appointed a, a committee to uh, to look at those, um, not just for Mancho trucking, but for all trucking on the highway. Uh, I don't think the governor really wanted to signal out a, a specific project. Um, but uh, we've certainly been working our way through that. Um, uh, of course, there's a group that it's op is opposes the plan, and uh, so they've uh, they've uh, uh, brought a lawsuit against DOT, um, and that's being walked walk through the process. But uh, uh, we're confident that uh, the plan is 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 a good plan. Uh, Ken Ross is a has a very high safety culture, and, and that's something that they take very seriously. Uh, these, I, I think, I would venture to say, these will probably be some of the safest trucks on the highway. Um, they're they're legal loads, they're legal sized trucks, um, and uh, they meet all the criteria that uh, the DOT has uh, determined are appropriate for uh, for the truck haul. So, um, but I did want to point that out. Um, you know, there, there wouldn't be. A, wouldn't be the mining operation if there wasn't some level of controversy around it, but uh, we actually don't need any permits uh, to do what is planned to do. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, you touched on it, but just uh, in, in, in full, um, Brad asks, are all roads built for Mancho, or all roads that are going to be used by Mancho already built? Yeah, so the one photo there with the truck coming, the, the uh, road haul truck coming down the, high, down, down the road, that was, uh, the road that we built this summer, uh, started last winter, but completed this summer. It's a 6% grade road, very wide. You can see there's a lot of room on that road for the, for the truck truck uh, and, and the opposing traffic. Uh, that's our roads on private land owned by the tribe, um, on the on Tetland tribal lands. Uh, that road then connects the mine site to the Alaska Highway. And of course, Alaska Highway is, you know, was built back in the 40s uh, to support the war effort, actually. Uh, and that's a paved highway all the way to Fairbanks, uh, or actually all the way up to Fort Knox, uh, the entrance to the Fort Knox facility. So yeah, all roads are, are completed and uh, no, um, other than maintenance, there's no other work to do. I will say that we, we do have in the truck haul schedule, um, uh, uh, I can't remember if it's five or, or 10 days of, uh, um, of restricted use on the on the trucks just you know if there's a snowstorm blowing snow um if it's super cold uh, they might not uh, want to run the trucks on the highway uh, so there's there's a built-in number of days in the schedule of, of downtime if you will it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be down all day it might be only for you know half a day or three or four hours of a day but uh, safety is the, the most important thing in, in any mining operation um, and that certainly uh, applies to the truck haul as well. That makes sense. Uh, another question that came over email, this is the last one before we get to the live questions for those waiting for their questions to get answered. Um, uh, Steve asks, is the agreement with the Tetlin tribe over Mancho permanent or is it ever up for renegotiation? Uh, nothing's ever permanent. So it's a, it's a, um, a 15 year lease that can be renewed uh, in fit for 15 year increments uh, thereafter. Um, it's, that's a pretty typical mining uh, mining arrangement. Sometimes they're for 20 years or 25 years, but this one was for 15. Um, and um, uh, so, yeah, we're we're in good shape there. Uh, the tribe is. Uh, I think I mentioned before that you know the tribe wants this mine started yesterday. Uh, they're very much looking forward uh, to the royalties that they'll receive. Uh, but also the jobs. Um, we've, we've always done a, a good job of working with the community uh, and with the tribe to hire locally and train uh, for jobs. Um, and so that that uh, that effort certainly continues under uh, Tim Ross's management. Great. 
Great, thanks. Now getting to the, the live questions. Uh, so Mr. St. Jean asks, uh, when is the Lucky Shot PFS estimated for? You don't have a date at this point. Um, first thing is is get uh, get the drilling uh, underway this summer um, and uh, put together uh, a resource that, like I said, you know, somewhere in the 400,000 ounce range that we think is large enough to then develop a, a mine plan around. Um, so I'd say, you know, give us a year to get the drilling done and then uh, we'd look to, uh, uh, to do that. That would be... Uh, 2025 if we want to sort of uh, aim a date but I don't have anything more specific than that at this point great thanks and while we're on um, exploration Mike asks uh, what's the exploration potential around Mancho at this point yeah so there's it's a huge land position um, in 675,000 acres so roughly the size of the state of Rhode Island and we've really only taken a, a hard look uh, at about five percent of that land package um, now we've done, uh, there's a lot of exploration potential right around Mancho, uh, the structural zones that, uh, that the mineralization, uh, occurs along at the identified, uh, resource reserve now at, uh, at Mancho is open long strike. Uh, there's several other significant, uh, surficial targets, uh, based on soil geochemistry, uh, and coincident geophysical anomalies. So there's more to work to do right around um the, the known deposits we call this minex um uh, and then we have a, a lot of data there that suggests that there's more mineralization there so it just needs a lot more drilling um but then there's the rest of the land package and we've only done uh, preliminary uh, stream sediment sampling and uh, pan concentrate sampling on the rest of it lots of other anomalous areas to follow up on uh this Coming year, 2024, we've just approved uh, roughly $4.7 million uh, exploration budget. So uh, that'll get started in the summertime. Um, and uh, we'll, a good part of that will be focused on, on drilling. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on finding additional mineralization um, around the mine site and being able to add to the, uh, you know, to the to the current mine plan, or yeah, the current mine plan, or the current mine life of uh, four and a half years. Uh, that's probably the, the the single most thing we can do to add value for shareholders is you know finding a, a few additional years of production at Mancho. That makes sense. Uh, Graham asks. He says, Rick, is the plan to follow the Mancho model for your other exploration projects? Uh, to a degree, yes. I mean, that's certainly what we're uh, thinking about doing with Lucky Shot. Again, uh, you know, I don't want to get to uh, say what, that's definitely what's going to happen, but if we can outline, a, 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 you know, something in the 10 to 15 gram uh, grade, um, and it's very consistent or uh, with Fort Knox, um, it's just quartz and, quartz and gold, so there's very little sulfide in it. Um, so it would be a good candidate to blend with the Fort Knox milling ore. Um, we, you know, so for Lucky Shot, certainly, um, our ex other exploration assets like Shamrock and, and Triple Z, um, you know, we'll see what we, uh, what we, what exploration finds at the very early stage at this point. Um, but we, you know, we think it's, um, certainly makes sense and look at opportunities where you can take advantage of the, of the existing mill infrastructure. So, uh, we like that, we like that plan, um. And uh, if we can duplicate it, we will. Uh, but that's not to say if we find a you know, a, you know three, four, five million ounce low grade heat bleachable ore that we wouldn't uh, you know, you know, do something there. But obviously, it's going to take longer to permit and all those things. So uh, you know, we want to go in with our eyes wide open on looking at new opportunities. Well, that makes sense. Uh, another question from Toby. He asks. Two parts, but one is, is it a bad winter in Alaska? And two, does winter slow down mill modifications at all? Uh, it's actually in the interior. Uh, Alaska is a big place. So uh, uh, <laughs> Anchorage has had a, a ton of snow on it this year. Uh, kind of remind me when I was a kid, we used to get lots of snow in Anchorage. And then for a period of time, uh, they didn't get a lot of snow. Uh, so this year, Anchorage got a ton of snow. Um, in the interior, we have not had a lot of snow. It's been cold. Uh, but uh, clear and cold is, is, is fine for working as long as it stays above about minus 40. When, when it's as cold Celsius as it, is, as it is Fahrenheit, you know it's damn cold. So uh, that's when you want to just, you know, again, safety first, 
uh, tend to slow down things uh, when it's minus 40. We have not had any minus 40 weather yet. Uh, I'm sure we'll get there. Uh, we always do in, uh, in interior. Um, but, uh, but by and large, uh, it's been a fairly easy winter in the interior so far. Great, thanks. Uh, this is one last question I just like to ask at the kind of year in review style events is what are you most excited for next year? Production. Um, you know, this is a, a great high quality deposit. Eight grams per ton is, I, I think, will be one of the highest grade open pit gold mines in the world. Uh, everything's come together and lined up. Uh, we've got good good contractors working on uh, at the mine site with Kiwit. Um, the uh, the Orhal contract, uh, they're doing a, a great job uh, in safety first always. And I, I, you know, I have to take my hat off to Ken Ross. They, they've run a very good, uh, safe operation and smooth and on time, on budget. Uh, factor ahead of schedule, so I, I, you know I have to really commend our uh, our joint venture partner and manager of the project, um, and the Ken Ross Alaska folks in general. They've they've done a great job, and uh, yeah, look forward to that first gold pour. Um, it's going to be very exciting, and it's going to start a a whole new chapter in uh, in Contango ore. So um, that's you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to move the office up here to Fairbanks. Uh, we've got lots of other ideas and what do we can do up here and uh, we think 2024 is going to be a fantastic year so uh, appreciate the question awesome well thanks rick for taking us through the presentation and the q a day i want to thank everybody who joined us particularly those who submitted questions if you're like me and you think of the perfect question to ask right after we hang up today uh, please do send it in i'll make sure that the contango team gets back to you as soon as possible you can always find more information on their website at contangoor.com uh, but thanks again for joining us i'll hand it off to rick for our final farewell i uh, just want to wish everybody uh, happy holidays uh it's a good time of year just to get your thoughts together and be with family and friends and uh, loved ones and uh, enjoy the holidays and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in 2024. Cheers.